Hey guys, how are you? Good to see you guys again. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Woohoo! It's right. Friday when Brad's we're back from California. <clears throat> back from California. Yeah. How was your trip? It was good. It was sunny, <laughs> sunny California. You know, it's uh, June gloom is on the beach is, is coming. Southern California has June gloom. What does that mean? June gloom is when there's marine layer by the ocean, so mm. it feels foggy and, and cloudy for most of the day. <clears throat> you drive inward a little bit. Like if you're, for instance, in L.A., you might be in Santa Monica, and it'll feel cloudy almost all day long. Uh, but then you drive in L.A., which is only, you know, 15, 20-minute drive in, and all of a sudden the sun comes out. And only in June? Uh, they call it June gloom, but it can actually be in end of May and June. Mm. Yeah, so a little June gloom, but... Um, I had a lot of beach time and um, friends and helped my daughter move um, out of college back home for the summer. She'll be back there in mm-hmm. the fall. Great. Wow, that was yeah. fast. Yeah, she's got her Dude, first year done. It so. was just recently that but you she went started, and her out there. But she started here part of the year because of COVID, right? She did. She okay. did start here. Yep. So it's oh, like okay, half okay. a year maybe? Yeah, she's uh, she's taking a summer class too. So she's doing a documentary on uh, Dolly Parton. Nice, sweet. Yeah, so hopefully she get to meet her. Going yeah, on, she's got going a to pigeon forge. She does have a contact, uh, so they may be able to try to try to see if they can squeeze out of inter- an interview with her. So yeah, well, when she gets done, we'll have to talk about it. Yeah, <clears throat> give it a review. It's oh, an eight minute great. piece, and I think it's going to. They're going to um, uh, submit them to festival festivals and stuff. It's a documentary, nice. so it's specific around um, a class she's taking and doing a documentary around women women. Did Influ- you know, influential women. Did you know that uh, University of Tennessee Knoxville has a Dolly Parton class? Really? Mm-hmm. A whole semester class on That's Dolly <laughs> Parton. <laughs> I don't know. It might be too much Dolly for me. <laughs> I, I The max Come I on. can do is Dollywood. Come on, well, Ken's never too much she's, Dolly. She's an interesting <laughs> icon. She is actually an amazing person. She's really cool, yeah. I mean, because everybody seems to love her, and she's kind of walks that fine mm-hmm. line of yeah. like celebrity. Yeah. And, Unifies all demographics. Yeah. yeah. But she's certainly, um, she's lar- you know, she's just... A, Larger than life. Yes. Yeah. Seemed like it. Yeah. So enough about Dolly. Let's talk about <laughs> agency life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, we've been on the uh, the current events train the last few weeks, which has been great. Get to know the day in the life of, of all of us. But, um, you know, getting back to the basics of, of agency life is what is the, what's, what's the, how, how does someone even start an agency? You know, we have a lot of different listeners and different demographics and, the word agency, um, I think, Brad, to you and I, might mean something different than it does to maybe somebody just starting out now. Um, what do you guys think from a from just a how to start? An, yeah, well, yeah. so we get that question a lot, mm-hmm. and um, and so uh, I guess maybe today we'll try and dig into it. Question I have is why would you want to start an agency? <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that question every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and what what constitutes an agency? And yeah. and are are you even because I I think um, most people aren't running an agency that mm. that are that say they're running an agency. Yeah, I'm not running an agency. I don't know if I'm running an agency or not. To be honest with you, it's <laughs> it's hard to. Yeah. I mean, you know, being in the in the world of of advertising and marketing, it's like it's it's quite different. The um, the amount of you know the type of people the the uh, your staff is quite different mm. than what you know an agency used to be yeah the energy is different um and so uh, how's the energy different i don't know um <clears throat> maybe more lean mm. um and uh you know just i think the roles have really changed there's been a lot of roles that are no longer just because of mm. technologies changed and and you know buying media has changed and and um you know automation has changed a lot of that so i feel like it's quite quite different in fact i'm not even sure if the word agency is very um for clients it's not accurate it's well not even accurate i don't even know if it's a positive word for them anymore Mm. it to me Mm. sometimes the word agency sounds like oh boy they're gonna spend a lot of my money um Mm. <clears throat> so I think things have, have are quite different um, in in that respect, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I I think today we should talk a little bit about what constitutes an, an agency, what type of roles mm. um, that we see in an agency or see in a business, a marketing advertising business, and 
maybe talk a little bit about what roles, if you're starting an agency, what are the key roles that you, that you may need? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that a lot of people are running an agency and I do think that that word does seem to carry some baggage in certain circles, you know? Um, and, uh, I don't think that baggage is, nec- is even accurate. And I think that's, um, for me, like an agency, I mean, technically an agency is, uh, you know, when a company that acts on behalf of a brand, right. And like, you know, they're, they're hiring out people. They have a certain budget that they're pulling from and they're using that to basically alleviate the, the advertising side from that brand. Right. And, and do a lot of the hiring and initiatives and those kind of things. And, and um, I would, I would venture to say that most, people that most companies that call themselves agencies are not actually agencies these days. You know, they might be small firms, um, you know, marketing specialists or, you know, technology specialists and those kind of things. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't use the word cause the reason, um, I, we don't, I, I don't think I, I know like at least from the standpoint of what an agency typically looks like, like Medicaid isn't an agency. Um, but we get lumped in, well, it, it kind of is something that people can understand. So we get lumped into that world and we do things that agencies do. So but if you have multiple definition clients, wise, we're yeah, not an agency. we need to define it and, and it might be subjective. Um, so you do work on behalf of other, for other clients and you have multiple clients that you do this work for. They come to you and hire you and it's, um, it's e-commerce related. It's some marketing related yeah. But you don't consider yourself an agency. Well, the reason the reason I don't is we're we're basically doing it all in house. We're not, you know. I think correct me if I'm wrong, and Brad, you can and both of you guys, but like you know, you're like the specialist in this area. But a traditional agency primarily would manage media buys, so they're they're like basically a general contractor. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate? Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Um, you know, the, they're not necessarily, yes. I mean, they're, they're doing some the things agency, in the house, yeah, but maybe strategy. But other than that, a lot of that stuff's going, it's a, it's a cost that goes through the agency and they're hiring and their main for role the is brand. to do that. Yeah. The yeah. Main, it's not, it's not, it's, it's transparent. They're protectors of the brand. Correct, they create yeah. strategy. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're rolling out. The, so maybe I'm splitting hairs, but yeah, I mean, like, yeah. you know, like I think there's elements of that agency that most, yeah. a lot of people do, but I would, venture to say that like most marketing agencies aren't doing that. I mean, how much of your revenue is kept in house versus farmed out? You know, right. mm-hmm. I mean, that's also a question maybe ask yourself. Um, I mean, I was, you know, for us and I, I would say for, for a lot of people that I, I mean, I know a lot of agency quote agency owners, a, the, a large majority of the revenue is kept in house, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, we try to do is, you know, with the staff that we have and the type of projects we're trying to keep, you know, 90% of it in house. Um, we're also specialists. I don't know, but I, I know. Mm-hmm. And so like our goal is to not do everything. And I know in the past agencies goal is to do or not, not to, not to do everything, but to figure out a way to get everything done, you know, through subbing it out and those kind of things. And they're more generalists that, 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 that not, not in a negative way, but I mean like, Traditionally, yeah. like their role was to like manage, get get something done, and there's a lot of different pieces involved in that. And um, I like yeah. the I like the word marketing partner, yeah, you know, versus yeah. agency, because I think so much of clients these days, so much of what an agency used to do, the client has actually brought in house, and I think the clients try because of the resources that you need and the the ability to do it now, a lot of the stuff in house. I think they see that if they can bring that in in house, that there's a cost benefit to it versus f- subbing it out or farming it out mm. to their agency. Mm-hmm. But I think it's more of a partnership um, in a different way than it used to be, um, and I think that's changed a lot of the landscape. I, it does mean a lot of different things. Like I think I think yeah. you're right. Like a marketing partner or some other partner. How do you more. talk about yourself if? You're a marketing partner to the client, but then f- public facing, do you say we're marketing partners? We talk to our, we talk to our 
customers in the third person. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, no. Oh, um, you know, I think the subtext is that we're, it's a partnership. Yeah. And, you know, you always want to be, um, align yourself with clients where you feel that, that mm-hmm. it's a partnership, right? As soon as you don't feel, as soon as you feel differently about that, then all of a sudden um, the relationship, we've talked about this in the past podcast, that the relationship can get, can get um, stressful mm-hmm. if you are that agency where the client just wants to dump on you and, mm. you know, and then. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think if you, if you go back, if anybody listening to this is curious as we are, and maybe we're the only people that, that geek out on this, but um, you know, add the, the term agency in the context of marketing and advertising it was ad agencies yeah. that started back in the what 20s or yeah even before yeah. that whenever um and then you got the big ones and just go watch an episode or two of mad men and you you'll get a a representation of in its glory days what an ad agency was right yeah. like that's a stereotypical ad agency and then so as we go into the 80s 90s and up to today what how has that evolved and changed? And and there's still those type of ad agencies, right? There's still the big. Yeah, the, I would say so. Uh, they, they've changed. They're too, doing but. a lot of brand management and media management, and so, and I think that's the difference. Um, you know, I you could call our agency <laughs> here uh, an agency. <laughs> you could call our agency our marketing specialist company an agency, but. Um, Marketing partners. Mark, we're marketing partners. Um, but really, we're probably more a marketing partner. Mm. We're marketing specialist. We um, Marketing firm. Marketing firm, yeah. Um, yeah, we do advertising as well. But I think for us at Anthem Republic, we are more strategic, and then we implement strategy for uh, return on investment. Mm. And so <clears throat> I almost look at us more of like a financial firm. When I think about our business, we're a financial firm that offers strategy and implementation. But and we, you know, we we strive to um, when we do manage brand, we strive to actually increase, you know, their uh, their brand equity by what we do with from a creative perspective. Is we want to do high end creative. We want to make sure that we represent the brand well um, in both you know, um, it's strategy and is implement it's creative implementation. So with that, we are, you know, we're, some people might call us a mini agency. Yeah, that might be true. Micro agency. Micro, <laughs> but I really don't think that we're really an advertising yeah. agency is what agencies are. I think there's a certain level of, uh, employee base that you need to be an agency to be that, um, and to be able to handle certain size customers. Mm. And I think a lot of it is hand holding and management and account work. You know, I think we're lean on account work. I think we try to, um, we don't, we're not heavy staffed in that area to the point where we're doing more management and hand holding. We're really trying to get stuff done mm. and make sure that our clients are seeing the results uh, from that if possible. So, it's interesting because I've worked with, I've worked with agents. I mean, I've worked in larger companies, right. firms, and they were quite different. Um, I would say that we're lean and mean where some agencies get fat and, and uh, a lot of, you know, it's all about the billing at that point. Yeah. It's like yeah. a big law firm. And I think the difference between an ad- advertising agency and a marketing agency is, as I understand it, is an advertising agency focuses on mainly selling advertising and makes a portion of the income, either from commissions or some other method of of selling that advertising. Right? Yeah, they can. And there's still ad, and there's still um, agencies that specialize in that exclusively. If you want to go buy, even television or internet or streaming or whatever, you can agencies just focus on that exclusively. And that's very different than what we do. Yeah, but the reason why we use that that term, though, is I guess the marketplace has its own definition of it, right? Mm-hmm. And so we get lumped, you know, all those all those different nuances get lumped into the to the concept of agency. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, if right? you, yeah, I mean, if you ask probably most people in the creative field or average, you know, marketing field, you, would you like to work for an advertising agency? They'd say, yeah. But if you ask a client, would you like to hire an advertising agency? They'd probably say no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, that sounds expensive. And so yeah. it's like, I think it's a sexy word that the industry likes, but I don't know that customers It'd be interesting to take a poll of different types of organizations and ask them about yeah. what they feel about this these these terms that we we just throw around as. Yeah, terms. I think it's romantic to think of yourself as an agency because there is that glory days of of all of that, right? Creativity and like business and just you know the the internal working environment of an agency, you know, and and even in the two point of craft beer on tap, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Office yeah. dogs, office dogs. Uh, you know, in the 2.0 of agency life, um, you know, or in the late nineties, early two thousands, it, it, it was, a, it was crazy. You know, people running around, you know, drinking and playing pool and riding scooters. And, you know, that, that, that is kind of a, a, a romantic idea, right? right? That's called Facebook now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. well, well, I mean, that has taken over that role, you know, as you, you know, I know you're joking, but like, yeah, that's, the reason why that doesn't exist is because, and this is not a bad thing. It's the cyclical nature, and we've talked about mm-hmm. this before of of you know ad platforms and marketing and the media buying and all that kind of stuff. And it's been so democratized that um, the reason agencies existed because it was difficult, it was complicated. You needed to know someone. You couldn't just go and like create an ad in Photoshop. Photoshop didn't exist necessarily, mm-hmm. and you couldn't just drop it into the television ethosphere and have it just show up right like so multiple people there needed to be that that, and like the creativity involved and you know there was a lot less advertising so there was a lot more dollars that went into each ad campaign and each brand that was advertising and so then you could ride scooters to get inspiration to strike (laughs) you know and um you know and, and that that i think that facebook did replace a lot of that 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 type of stuff um and so that kind of has evolved and changed, right? And, you know, as as the landscape evolves, businesses have to evolve. Mm-hmm. And so businesses have evolved. But what's funny is they've evolved kind of out of what a traditional agency most is, for the most part. I don't know, I, aside from the big ones, I don't know any small agency that is actually an agency. Mm. Um, they're probably mostly consultants and other things. Like for us, like we mostly do... Um, I would say most of what we're doing is consulting. We're doing implementation, but we're doing a lot of coaching and consulting and that kind of thing, you know, because there are a lot of internal internal teams, you know, and you don't need a giant agency to run a Facebook ad necessarily. Um, it's going to be more needed as, yeah. as, as all these things go on. So it's interesting how that cycles um, and, you know, might be the, the, the agency, the ad agency of old might actually be coming back in as far as a necessity um, in yeah. the marketplace. But yeah. Well, I mean, there was a time where maybe 20% of your agency was considered what they call traffic. I mean, it's just basically, you know, <clears throat> making sure that a, that a three quarter tape gets to the right, right mm-hmm. network to be able to show a commercial and make sure that it's tagged properly and, you know, all these moving parts and things being shipped and everything, you know. So it, nowadays you don't see that. I mean, everything's digital. It's a lot more streamlined. It's mostly automated. And um, so all of those old old time departments that was necessary now have shifted us to other things. Now mm-hmm. you have Facebook experts that are running the shows and, you know, Instagram experts and TikTok experts and stuff. So it's like it's a completely different world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and, I would say that uh, outs maybe, um, and we don't have to keep beating this dead horse, but the maybe what we have become and what most people consider agencies is, um, you know, people are outsourcing specialties, right? So we're specialists, outsource uh, specialist contractors. Um, and I think clients come to us now because they don't have the in-house specialty to execute what it, uh, whatever it is in the context that that house, that big house of, of marketing and, and digital advertising, right? So it could be a brand, like you said, that kind of falls under that kind of slightly. It could be, you know, how do I get more customers online? How do I 
rank for certain things? How do I build my e-commerce site so it sells more products? All those things are specialties that they may have some in-house or they're not doing well enough and they need some help in it. And so it's not just, you know, we got to go buy some television and radio ads and make me a commercial. Like that was the world back then. Now it's all the things that I said. And so, so, you know, call it an agency, call it a firm, call it an outsourcer. That's a great, that's a great question for anyone listening to answer. Like, what are you? Are Mm. you, are you an agency or are you some specialist, you know, in a certain area or are you multiple things? I'm not saying that you should change how you um, associate yourself with the public because your, your market may think of you as an agency. And so you still have to kind of use that word, you know, maybe, um, but understanding the specialty that you're in is, um, it creates a valuable thing for, for, for Um, business. And so I, and I would, I, I always, you know, I, I, um, since this is an episode about how to start an agency, mm -hmm. how to create an agency, like calling yourself an agency out of the gate basically means nothing to no one. Right. And so I wouldn't, you know, I would be careful about doing that. I, I haven't done this recently, but I'd be curious to see um, what the Google searches are for our type of business. Like, are people searching for agents, the word agencies? Are they searching for a marketing company? Like, what is the actual... Um, I, do, is, I keep an eye on that for our agency. And yeah, I know you... It, yeah, and so it, it, it... Yes, there are people who still use that. Yeah. Um, I have client... Well, we have clients at 5 by 5 who who come to us and says, we are interviewing agencies for this project. Uh, RFPs, requests for proposals, go out to agencies specifically. Yeah. Um, the searches are marketing agencies, Nashville, advertising yeah. agency, Nashville. I mean, you can see those searches. Yeah. But it, but it's also... If, if you guys didn't know from an audience, we're in Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> right. uh, in and around. So, in and around. So there's that, <laughs> but we also get inquiries people that are searching for do you guys do um hubspot you know implementation Mm. you know it's it's very specialized and so what i see happening a lot and ken it's what you're referring to is that there are quote agencies um and it might be three people that just specialize in hubspot or they might specialize in shopify or they may so so i think it's it has lost its meaning but I think for the purposes of the rest of this, of this uh, podcast is maybe we can talk about if somebody were going to start a blank firm, agency, partnership, whatever, where to even start. And I think I have yeah. some ideas on where people are already starting. They're already independent contractors and they just like grow their business yeah. and call themselves an agency. Yeah. Well, outside of the role of like new business development, mm-hmm. which <clears throat> we've talked about in the past of how much of your business should be dedicated to that or, or what our businesses are dedicated. Um, how much of your businesses are dedicated to a, just account management? Don't, not not implementation not implementation but just dealing with a customer on a daily basis um i know we're kind of lean in that area specific um in um intentionally um right now we're lean in that area um i think it's mainly because a lot of our clients we've have a really strong relationship with and so we don't need as much of the hand holding um as we have in the past with other customers um, but I would say probably only around 10 to 15% of our resources are dedicated right now to just project, not project management, but more, more um, customer facing, um, energy or resources. What about you guys? We're very heavy on it. Um, Mike Schatz, who we got to have on the program, he's Mike's the fourth, yeah. fourth member of this crew who okay. hasn't been on here yet. Um, no, but he's a partner at five by five and he's over, um, the, the client management side. And so we have intentionally been very heavy on, on high touch, um, for various reasons, but every, every new client gets a minimum of two client managers. So a client manager and a client director, um, 
What's the difference? Pretty much too. Client manager manages the everyday flow of, of what needs to be done, the connection, the follow up, the email, you know, just that, that everyday work Mm -hmm. between the agency and then the client director is thinking more strategically, um, just overlooking the campaign in general and making sure from a, from an overall management, just not just the, the busy work, the things, the task, but also just is the client happy is, is there's other things we could be doing, um, being the lead when it comes to, you know, those calls and yeah. the, those relationships. And that, I like that, uh, that approach because I think as a manager, you're so inundated from the day in day out work, just trying mm-hmm. to get it, get it implemented at some level, or at least getting it um, unpacked for your team that you can't see the forest very right. well when exactly. you're in, you know, and so I think having that director role would um, is really crucial to be thinking more long-term or further ahead or, and strategy for your clients. Yeah. And if Look, there's an issue too, they can kind of come on board and help solve some more top level. Yeah. Issues. And the client director would also be keeping track of, you know, the retainer hours that they being used properly. Um, like you said, just the big vision of it overall to make sure that, you know, are, are we, is the client happy and are we going to get renewed and are we going to keep them for the next several years? How yeah. do we, how, he's thinking or she's thinking about that specifically. Who's uh, more responsible for the actual uh, relationship, I guess, if, if something went array a little, a little client awry, director, the director would. So the director is like the one that's kind of more of the, more the, of the face of the agency. The face. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because, um, and, and I, I've, I think for anyone listening, there's no right or wrong way, but I do think there's a type of client that likes that and there's a type of client that mm-hmm. doesn't, right? Yeah. And I'd be curious to know, like, as you guys are bringing in new business, do you ever have clients be like, I don't think I need both of those things. Can I shrink the, yeah. shrink the budget and not have to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it does happen. I think, uh, I think there's the reality of scale. So for instance, as a 35 person agency, we're considered still a small agency, right? But what we can do and the clients that we can attract and that we'll, that we, that we take is very different than say a three person agency, right? So if, if a client is moaning about, Oh, you have too many people working on my account. I don't want to pay for that. It's the wrong uh, kind of client. It's probably the wrong kind of client yeah. or, or we're not doing our job well enough if if they're super happy they don't really they see the value in it right so yeah. if it's high touch and they're getting results and but but to your point yeah it it does happen but is is there a point with the customer that you can have too much high touch like there you can almost to be the point where you're overly um Touch, I don't know how to explain it. Bothering touchy. them? Touching. <laughs> a little really, too touchy feeling. A little too touchy. No, not you know what I'm saying? Kind of it's Brad like they don't, they here. start to not see the value because it's like, okay, we have three people on every call yeah. and we're not really talking about, like, why are these people on these calls? They're not really necessary. Dude. Yeah. I'm paying for this. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely for sure. And 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 that's always a, um, it's always a, a thought. If, if you're going to be on a call or a meeting with a client, then bring value to it. Yes. And we, we often say, Hey, Bob, you've been on these calls the last couple of weeks. I don't think you need to be on them because, you know, we're not talking about anything digital. Um, or, or I may say to, you know, Hey, there's five people on this call. I don't think so. And so, and so, and so needs to be on the call. So that's part of the client management, the client direction with the client is knowing how to manage their time. We, correctly. it just cracks me up. I, I, I'm one of those people who just kind of, are always laughing inside about ridiculous things in life. But one of the things that we've, we have a, we have a uh, client in the past and like we've been on calls where there was people on calls from our client side, not on our side. Yeah. And literally like weeks would go by and we'd be on calls and we, they would be on the call, but we would they would never talk, never. And I'm like, and there's kind of like high end people on the call. And I'm like, what in the world is this person on the call for? Like, they're not adding any value. In fact, I, even on the back end, they're not doing any work. Like, we never contact them outside of them being on a call. 
I'm like, man, that is cost. I just laugh at that. I'm like, that's costing them a lot of money to have yeah. this person just sit there and do nothing. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But sure. I don't want to be that. I mean, I, on the other side, I never want to have people on our call that weren't actively involved in a project or talking or adding value. Right. And perception also too. I mean, even if they are adding value in the back end and it's good for them to be on the call, don't maybe just record it for them mm -hmm. so that the client doesn't actually see that there's a person every week, day after day on a call that never does anything. And right. they don't know in the background they're actually working, um, you know, um, on their project. But yeah, I mean, I think one thing I've learned over over the years is that there is no right or wrong way. But I do think there's a couple things to keep in mind. And again, being that you're this is an episode about how to start, mm -hmm. you know, like I think choosing how you do things and your, I guess I would call it your philosophy, like yes. heavy client management, not heavy client, whatever that may be. Um, choosing how you do things and doing it intentionally and then having some rationale around, here's why our philosophy is our philosophy and here's why we do this. Mm -hmm. That reasoning is important because whether you have um, more client management or more other staff in other places or less staff in other places, or whether you say, Hey, we don't do this for this reason, whatever you need to be able to explain that and basically sell it to the client as why it's the best thing for them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they're going to arbitrarily either you're le otherwise you leave it up to the person to arbitrarily think, Oh man, they're just wasting a lot of yeah. resources or, Oh man, like, like, they don't care about this kind of thing. Um, and so whatever you do, I think doing it with intention and kind of being able to say, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is think about how you uniquely deliver the value that you deliver, mm. right? In that philosophy. And that might be a bunch of different things. And then communicate that, you know, like we've talked about billing, right? For instance, like we don't have, we have very little accounting staff and we pass that value on to our clients but we're like we'd say it's like hey look we don't have people that follow up and add late fees and do this like this is not part of it like we're in e-commerce everything's digital and and electronic like that's how we work that's what we work within we practice what we preach that's our philosophy and that savings get gets passed or that value gets passed on to you as the client um and so that's one of the reasons why we do electronic building billing and that's one of the reasons why we can't not do electronic billing because we don't have a staff of people to go follow you around if you forget to pay and those kind of things um but if you just said no no we don't do that we don't take checks and you leave it at that then and you had no reasonable explanation as to why it's a benefit to the client um then you leave it up to them to say okay maybe i like that maybe i don't like yeah. that and so I just think like that concept, mm -hmm. like applying it to every area of the business is, is important no matter what you do. Yeah. And I think that's the key. I think for when you're, if you're starting out a new agency is to look at how you can automate, how you can take what more, most agencies would have to hire mm -hmm. and have, you know, pay and, and, uh, pay a person to do. If you can automate that, I mean, you're just already ahead because that's right. the more that you can, um, you know, find ways to get rid of expenses. I mean, the more money you're going to make mm -hmm. and the more competitive you can be and the more you have more opportunities you can get in there and, and uh, maybe I'll price somebody, somebody else because you don't have that, you know, large overhead. Mm -hmm. I think one of the, one of the challenges that I see as agencies is that every agency order owner that or partner that I talk to is always trying their whole focus is find making sure that their hired employees are are being they have enough business for them or they have you know they're constantly losing accounts and getting accounts and it's it's, it's constantly chasing that mm. i find and it's it's part of the deal it's part of business um so it's not like you can't completely eliminate it but i find that that's always the fear of business owners is can I keep my staff busy? Because if I don't, then I'm letting go. And when, when I let go, I lose resources I, that I've trained and spent tons of time. And then I'm no longer, I no longer have that resource. So then I can't sell that service or product any longer. I have to find a, maybe a third party to do mm. it for me or a freelancer. And that's more challenging. And so they're, they're constantly trying to keep their staff level where it is and, or maybe even grow it but it's a constantly chasing the the new account yeah. and it's not it's not that's business right we're constantly getting new business and stuff but it 
it almost feels like they're not focusing on their business growth, but more or less is, you know, it's just the world that, that a lot of agencies live in. And, and it's like, and I've seen that where, you know, 20% of your staff is let go overnight because you lost an account. And we've talked about that in the past. And that's some of our frustrations in this business. But, um, you know, I think doing what you're doing is automating as much as possible where you're not having a human person. That way, if an account leaves, it's not, you know, you're not sitting there trying to fill seats all day long. Well, the thing that, that, um, so this is a bit of a topic for another episode. It was almost the one I suggested for today, but I just wasn't really fully prepared for it. But this idea of scale is something Mm -hmm. that I think agencies struggle with. Yes. And, um, and I have, and we should probably discuss that. Um, but what the way I look at it is that's something that I've always as a business, I think, I think, I think, I think sometimes people do it too soon. So if you're starting out an agency, like worrying about scale is not the, the main problem right now. You should think about it. You should do things that make sure that you don't eliminate scale, but do things that don't scale and make sure that you have a good business service, that kind of thing. But as you grow, and I think especially agencies, I think agencies have a specific problem with scale. Mm. You know, it's a very one-to-one human yeah. resource intensive type business. And, um, for me, uh, that that's a, that's a problem that we've always been trying to crack in different places. And I, and I think one way to do that is you got to decouple, you got to somehow decouple human beings from like that one-to-one ratio mm. so that, every human hour, hour of a specialist can be amplified many times over. So that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean sacrificing work quality and all that kind of stuff. You have to do just as great work quality or maybe even better um, while making humans more uh, efficient yeah. and amplify their, their Can ability. you give, uh, give the listeners a kind of an example of, of that within your agency About, a little bit? Yeah. Just how like certain things that you would amplify, like maybe having one person doing it, but they're able to maximize and amplify that to, that could, you yeah. know. So like, um, you talked we, about the billing. Well, the billing one is a, is a, is a good example because, um, you know, you have to, I mean, again, you have to add more and more accounting staff as clients come on, right? It's not the best example. I think the bigger challenge for agencies is probably their delivery system and, and the scale in that area. But I mean, just simply switching, breaking the maybe expected norm of an agency where you'd have invoices sent out and accounting and term, certain terms for different people and kind of stuff breaking that and sort of adopting the philosophy that, you know, many technology platforms do, which is basically like, we're going to have one set of terms. Everyone's going to have to agree to it. And, you know, rather than having multiple, you have one to many mm-hmm. versus many to one or, or, or sorry, versus one to one. Um, that is one example of doing it. And it, it feels a little odd at first because you're like, you do get the questions and you have to be, that's why, that's why the, the reasoning has to be there. You have to be intentional about it because you get the questions about like, no one else does this. Why do you do this? Um, and so there, it is, it is against the norm, but, um, you know, doing something like that means we can, we can scale to a high degree in that area without adding human resources. I, I think the cool thing that you did earlier when you talked about your, the finance part of billing is that you have a unique you have a value proposition that yes. you give to your customer of why you do what you do. So you might say, Hey, this is out of the norm of what a lot of agencies do. It may not, be, it may not be quite as flexible for the client, but there's a value that they get from it. Right. So that they get, you know, better prices or more lean or whatever time frame. It could be anything. Right. But you, you have, to, and I like that because I think that in the end, it kind of makes sense. It's like, Oh yeah, we're efficient. We have to be efficient as a business. Are we expect, you know, we want our agency to also be efficient as well. I find that everyone has that. Like every, every business owner has a reason why they do the thing. You know, it's not necessarily, it's not selfish. Like it may seem like it, but it's not. Yeah, like it's a it's, win-win for both. It's a win-win. Win, but but I do think a lot of people don't, it's, it's not top of mind the value for the client. A lot of times it's top of mind the value for you and you haven't necessarily done the thinking of how it's valuable for your client, but it is, I would say in rare circumstances, would it not be something valuable to your client? If you're doing something better for your business, even if it's just simple, if even it's as simple as this, like, Hey, we're doing this because it makes us healthier. And if we're healthier, then we're a better partner for you. 
I have certain folks in my life that have started agencies and they've come to me and asked me questions about how to, how, how do you guys do this? How do, how does this work? The problem that I have with that is that they're trying to fall into a model mm -hmm. that makes them feel like they're doing what mm. agencies do. I just, I'm using the little air quotes <laughs> right now. The problem is they're not looking at it. What's best for their business. Right. Like, right. All That's you have right. to do is look at the money flow and go, yeah. what's best for the business? Not what I have to do so that I can earn the agency title, you know? And I think that's the key top point that we kind of want to make here is that agencies, the word agencies, maybe you are an agency, but maybe you're not and that's okay. And do what's best for your business from a right. business perspective. It's a brand new era. Don't go back to the Mad Men right. approach. Mad Men's approach is old. I'm old. I, don't talk to me about what I've done in the past because the past is the past. This is the future. And the the agencies or the businesses that are going to succeed are going to do something different. So I, 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 Innovate. Congr I congratulate you on that because I think that... No, I mean, that sometimes... That actually makes you feel really good. Yeah, no, I think it's because it's like you're not you kind of don't have an agency baggage. Like you're not right. coming from something where you've learned bad habits. It has or to be this way. has to be this way. Right. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're forging new frontiers. And sometimes that can be a little hard for employees that come from a background of traditional background, because they might have to do different processes. Um, but the key is, and the clients might go, Oh, this isn't what I'm normally used to when working with agencies, but Okay whatever, you know, it sounds cool. And you're giving me the well, value. Some, some people are going to like, not like it and go away, but that's the truth. I believe with any innovation, like, yeah, you know, um, and, and other people will adopt it because they value some of the things that are, are involved in, in yeah. that reasoning. Yeah. And I, what are the non-negotiables? Okay. So I think where we've arrived so far in our discussion is what is an agency? What is it not? And I think what you just said is key, Brad, is it doesn't really matter what is best for your business. How can you be successful and earn money and serve your clients the best? Like, what does that look like for you? And Ken gave us an example of what it looks like for Medicaid. But are there, are we saying that there are no non-negotiables? Right. Meaning, can you just like, is whatever's there, good for you? Is there a model of some Is kind? there things that you should never skimp on. And when I say that, I guess where I'm going with is like, what should you plan for? If you're saying, you know what, I'm getting more clients and I think I want to start this and I want to hire a couple people. Yes. What should I prioritize? So let's talk about that. I think that if somebody is hiring you, it depends on your agency. If you are a commodity agency, meaning you're just there to do commodity work, then I think you can get by with just doing good work. And um, the strategy itself may be dictated by the client and not by the agency. But if you're an agency or a business that wants to really lead other businesses and brands, you have to show up with somebody who has some experience um, and has not just, um, not just marketing experience, but has true business um, acumen. Like they're, you know, they understand business, they understand the economy, they understand financial um, uh, uh, issues, they understand, you know, a little different, a lot of different things, and also marketing, and can really lead a client. So I think you need that leader that a client will, um, you know, well, that will respect. And I think that a lot of our clients, they're like in their 50s, right? That's kind of the sweet spot. They've been around the block. They've started multiple companies. This may be their company. They may be leading the company. There may be a CEO level. They're very savvy about business. And if you don't come in with some uh, strategy that they align with, or they don't, if you're bringing in a junior level person, a young person that is going in there tr that doesn't have the experience they'll sniff them out immediately and that might be a challenge. So I personally think that strong experience and leadership it, as far as just the, um, the main contact with their direct client is key. That's I mean, to, to, to add to that, I would summarize it as you have to be really good at something. Mm. Yeah. Right. Like um, if you're going to start an agency of some kind, you need to have some specialty 
if you don't have some excellence or mastery at something, mm. then job number one would be to do that, to do that more or to, or to be wide open with clients and be like, Hey, look, I'm willing to do this for free or, or for a little bit of money because I'm trying to learn this thing. And yeah. there, there'll be some people that'll take that. Some people won't. But yeah, I do you think I, that, that, that expertise has to be there. Yeah, and like, I think the fire has to be there in the, like the yeah, fire of the person's leading because you have to be so, um, uh, what's the word? Um, resilient. No, <laughs> Maybe, yeah, you have to be resilient. Sexy. Yeah, you have to be all of that. <laughs> no, I mean, I think you just... Sweet talker. Yes, all of that. <laughs> you have to be everything to everyone. No, I think you just have to have the fire in your belly that you're, you're passionate about yes. what you're talking passionate. about. You're passionate about their business. Like, people know immediately mm -hmm. if you really care about their business yeah. or not. Yeah. And Or if you're just there for the job. And you're just... Like, people that go in and say, you know, I'm just here. I'm going to do a good job for you, and I'm going to do the best I can. No, thank you. <laughs> well, I think yeah. it's a good segue for what I would say, and maybe it's a good place to maybe wrap up this issue, this this uh, episode. I think we should probably do a part two on this. It's important, but it's a good segue for what you just said. Is um, both of you said is first of all, you got to like be a specialist and you know really hone in on your craft of what you're selling, right? Otherwise, why do people want you? So whatever it is that is, I think that's number one. Number two. The first thing you should hire and or partner with is somebody who meets the the needs of what you're talking about, Brad, um, and also the passionate side of that, the expertise, the seasoning. And I would say a client relationship person to be the face and to execute, to pro and it might be all in one at, at this time until you can split them out, project management, project management. And being good with people uh, because nine times out of 10, the person who's an expert in whatever the services you offer is not really good at the project management, and the client facing. And that's where I think a lot of people get in trouble is I'm really good at social media. I'm really good at it. And people want to pay me to do it. And then they get a few clients and they're, they realize I hate dealing with clients. Well, do you think the clients is not going to feel that? Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden you can't, you wonder why you, you can't grow your business higher. So I would say mm -hmm. someone who can manage your time, make sure they're client facing and manage those projects and keep them on. That is, was good. Is that everything. was going to be mine. Yeah. Is organizational staff. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I mean, I would say your first hire, if you're starting an agency, if you're asking, should I start an agency? It's because you probably have a specialty in something, mm -hmm. right. And that you want to do more of that. And yeah. so that means that you're the specialist most likely. And that means that, I believe the first hire should be organizational staff, mm -hmm. communications, organization, project management, whatever that is. You're right. Because like the, for the most part, the artist is that specialist. And that artist typically is not necessarily good at the organization or at the very least doesn't have time to do both. Right. And so having organizational staff is key because otherwise you'll have clients that are upset no matter yes. how good you are. That's right. If your communication is bad. That'll happen. I think another key um, person in your team that deals with the customer, there should be at least one person that, that is like this. It doesn't always have to be the lead, but it should be somebody close to the lead in your agency that's working directly with the client, is to love their business or their brand more than they do. Mm. Like if they sense that, man, this guy is in love with our company and our brand, eats, drinks, everything, our brand, uh, there's a sense that they actually give up. They give all. They literally hand over the the mm. reins to you, and they're like, "Listen, you got this. Like, you love it more than I do. I'm here. I'm you know, I'm the CEO, and this guy here is from the agency. Just loves it, you know. Mm. And that's good. If it's somebody who's also bringing great strategy, that's even more powerful. So, good stuff, guys. Why yeah. don't we do a part two on this? Yeah, because I think, I think so. I'd love to get into like, the creative side and how that how that inter interacts and absolutely other functions, etc. Cool. All right. Until next time, go run your agency. See you. Yes. Bye. <laughs>